let's play this clip here of Biden. Biden spoke at the White House recently about the economic gains and some of the numbers that have been coming out about wage growth. Now we can mitigate and 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 put some cold water on that is in that we've spoken about how rental prices are absolutely out of control. And so in some ways, the gouging on that end is making the wage gains not as felt as they should be. But the reality is, is that for the most part, the declining inflation, the increases in uh, wages, unemployment remaining consistently low, these are for standard White House reporters or people that cover politics, good numbers on that front. We've played clips of Fox News basically saying, well, unemployment could be lower. It's 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 at really low rates right now. Like we're talking lowest it's been in years, if you don't mind looking up the exact year, Bradley, of that. But um, this is Biden speaking about some of those dynamics at the White House and talking uh, about the Fed's basically aggressive interest rate hikes and diverging from them, which is quite interesting because I don't know if you would have seen this 10, 15 years ago when Larry Summers was the most uh, important voice in Obama's ear, for example, on this front. But uh, here's what he had to say. For example, over the past year, we've seen dramatic decline in inflation to drop by two thirds down to three percent at a time when unemployment has been below four percent for the longest stretch in 50 years. I've rejected the notion that the reason for inflation is the only way to get inflation down is reduce employment and or reduce wages. Remember, the experts said to get inflation under control, we need to lower those wages and drive up unemployment. But I've never bought that. I don't think the problem in America today is too many people working or working people are making too much money. Well, the, the problem, though, Mr. President, is that the uh, head of the Fed, who you kept on, Jerome Powell, from the Trump administration, does not agree with your assessment. Biden hasn't always felt that way. That's not a true statement there by him. However, the fact that he's saying that is a market improvement for the Democratic Party. There's no there's no other way to slice it. The problem is, is that in practice, that's not what's being implemented, because as much as Biden has like improved on the substance of understanding that the connection between labor and employment um, or I'm sorry, inflation and employment is not what like Milton Friedmanites uh, and these Fed or uh, orthodox thinkers have been pushing essentially he's un come to the conclusion that that's a myth which is true yeah it's not but experts it's larry summers right but or, the, not larry summers it's um uh, the, your fed chairman jerome powell right exactly and that's that's the thing that's the problem here is that i'm i'm very encouraged to hear that i i mean this is what progressive economists have been saying for years and years and years and yet you can't find anybody within the uh like Fed leadership that doesn't in some way subscribe to that notion. So Biden is showing progress on this front. The problem, though, is that eventually these rate hikes, where they were essentially at zero in the midst of the pandemic, being raised 10 different times to over 5%, um, which is the highest that it's been since, what, 2007? And in terms of the unemployment numbers, there it's... Uh, the lowest since 1969. So again, the, thank you for looking that up, Bradley. Those metrics are very good for uh, like the the president's resume, essentially. But the, the these the the effects of this are going to be felt. Uh, it's just a matter of when. And the problem is is that Biden, despite believing this, is still too committed to notions of bipartisanship that are immensely outdated. And that is superseding his evolution on that. And Jerome Powell should have been gone day one when Biden got into office. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Yeah, I mean, Harold Meyerson has a piece in um, uh, 
the American prospect, but it's basically on like Biden's economy and how it's been good for people at the low end of the wage scale. They've experienced wage growth through like the tight labor market. But and I think that's important to uh, note um, as people like try to say like there was just an, uh, um, it was just all negative. I think like it shows that the um, stimulus during the pandemic was good and, and that sort of stuff. Um, but the problem is, what if there's a recession? Yeah. Right. Like that. This stuff is fleeting. I'm, I'm glad we got back to normal before COVID. But guess what? Bernie Sanders uh, didn't uh, have success in the 2016 uh, uh, primary because of the COVID economy. It was because of the normal standard economy that we're celebrating are getting back to normal on. Yeah. And, and so like we like I'm glad that there's been a little bit of wage growth. But it, I, to me, like I, the, the, the idea that it's um, enjoyable by anybody that's lower income, like they have to look at rent prices or other things like that are actually still inflated despite the overall numbers going down like i think people uh, are really uh, out of touch on, well on it's the same usage of the metric of like gdp and yeah. that, that as if that has any effect on or it, its effects are felt in any way on a day-to-day basis by the average worker and um, so like i'd say the economy is really good for the rentiers that were in control of the economy before covid19 and it's been moderately uh, okay uh, for some of the working people, but I don't know how uh, durable those gains are. Exactly, exactly. Um, durability is the key, right? If, if these things are not put in place by Fed policy or really... Proact, something like that. Something like that. They'll, they'll change due to market forces, yeah. right? And, and, and part of the problem here, too, is that Senate brain... The Senate brain that was embedded in Biden's decision to keep someone like Powell on is the same Senate brain that doesn't get rid of the filibuster, which is a huge reason why our fiscal policy is outsourced to the Fed when much of what we could do to combat inflation would be clawing back all that money that's being hoarded and not spent by the wealthiest in the country in this country because we've done tax break after tax break for the top 1.01 percent whatever uh, the case may be through offshore tax havens through loopholes they've gotten richer and richer and richer and that is a much bigger driver of, of inflation than anything in the labor market it's oligarchs hoarding wealth and not putting that money into circulation in a way that like makes the economy more robust so because we have been unable to get rid of things like the filibuster because of senate congeniality that is what is the systemic driver of some of the dynamics that we're seeing right here we should be having much more robust financial policy the power of the purse is supposed to be through um uh, through the legislative branch and it is not that way anymore because of political corruption and because of institutionalism that should have been done away with a long time ago.